BPM, beats per minute. And it talks about the 1990s in France, about an organization called Act Up Paris, which fought to have those suffering from AIDS recognized and helped. And it's a tough story because they weren't being recognized nor helped very easily. And it reminded me that I need to ask for an apology for who I was during the 1990s. Not that I was bad, I, I did lots of good things, but I was busy with life. And so sometimes I forgot to notice that crisis. I forgot to see it. I was raising two sons. I, I got married, that maybe was the hardest part. <laughs> I, was turning, I, I was trying to be a, learn how to be a teacher. And so I forgot to be as noticing as I needed to be. In short, I guess I can say that I was so busy watching the parade of my life that I forgot to see the people around me. But I kind of felt that way yesterday. Um, as I sat in that march for our lives, I at first was wandering around the plaza and saying hi to people, and it was a jumble of people and things and signs and noises and just stuff. And then, as the parade was getting ready to start, I walked down where I was going to go. And I went up to the second story of a parking garage and watched it form and start coming. And I got great pictures of this. So if you want to see great pictures, you come to me and I'll show them. <laughs> and I watched as these thousands of people walked towards me. And I took picture after picture. So if you were there, I have a picture of you somewhere. <laughs> Some of you I tried to yell at. Joe didn't hear me, so I'm being mad at her. But. but I sat there for 30 minutes watching as these people walked past. And I, and I had just enough distance from that second floor down to be able to get a different perspective. Because when you're in the middle of it, you're so caught up but I was able to see some of the edges. And I saw the lady who couldn't quite get up on the curb. And the person who came over and saw her and helped her. And I saw the, the group over here that was kind of wondering what's going on and why are they in, why is this parade in the way of where I was going to? Because they were just trying to cross the street. And I saw the different groups that bound together, or the people who felt like they were walking alone, and I watched them in a way that I don't usually get to see in a parade, because usually if you're in the parade, you're busy. You're seeing lots of stuff. And you forget the person who's not quite in the parade. So the parade we're talking about today is that parade where they come in with the hosannas and the palm leaves and all the joy, a, a victory parade. Or at least maybe it was for the disciples or for the crowd. But how about for the man on the donkey who maybe was looking beyond just that day and was seeing a larger, darker perspective, which we sometimes miss in the midst of the joy, in the midst of everything that's going right, we easily miss how this person right here is struggling. Looming in front of him was something the, other, the others couldn't glimpse or even if they could, maybe chose to overlook or even, if we're not careful, diminish. But if you're going through a time like that, you can't diminish it. Because whatever the trouble is, whatever the struggle, whatever the challenge that you're seeing doesn't let you go past it and just be joyous. So what do we do when it's not our struggle, when it's not what we see right then? How do we react? I think it's that we choose to recognize that space. Even though it may not be afflicting me in that moment, 
Do I have the will to look and see that they're struggling? And do I choose to, even though I may not be able to be in that space, do I choose to sit, tell them I'm with them and I'll walk as much as I can there with them? Because whatever might divide us, that different muck and mire through which we all walk, one of the most important things we tell each other is that we're not alone. Even when we can't solve the issue of the other, even when we can't take care of all the hurt that they have or, or show them all of the vision they need, we can walk in that space with them. We can choose to bless the space between us, as our call to awareness said. It is such a privilege to have people who bless us with their love and prayer. It is not a luxury to have such friends. It is necessary. Each one of us need those people who somehow lift us up and carry us in those places where life is too much for us. Relationship is not about being comfortable only. It's a great place where we sometimes find comfort and comfortability, but it is also choosing to sit with each other when it's not quite easy, when it's not quite perfect, when it's not what they would wish or we would wish. It's choosing to be with each other and let each other know that we're not alone. In that movie I was telling you about, there's two characters, Sean and Tibaldi. And the two of them are running, act up, or at least helping it to run, and they're not quite of the same mind, as sometimes happens in organizations. <laughs> and so they've been at, at odds with one another again and again, trying to figure out what's the right way to go forward. And um, then Sean, his aides, takes over, and he ends up in the hospital struggling with his health. And inexplicably, at least to Sean's mind, he bald shows up. And he says, well, what are you doing here? And he says, I know we've been at odds with one another, and I know we don't like each other, but we're friends. And that's what friends do. You see, we choose each other even when we don't like each other very much. We choose love in the midst of all those things that make it easier, easier for us to choose something else. We choose to be in relationship and in connection to each other instead of all the other things we could choose. One of the great prophets of my life, Johnny Cash, <laughs> sang a song called Hurt. And in that song he speaks about relationship and says, you, speaking to the person he's singing to, you are someone else but I am still right here. What have I become, my sweetest friend? Everyone I know goes away in the end. And when you're in the midst of that deep, dark, struggling space, that's what it feels like. But our spirituality says, let's tell a different story. The spirit which flows in us calls us to be in that person's life in such a way that it's not true that everyone goes away. That we are there for each other even when it's not easy even when it's challenging, that we choose to remember each other. We choose to see that person sitting on the edge of the parade. And that even when we're full of joy, even when we're seeing all the goodness of life, that we choose to see the one who's not. We choose not to leave the other person alone. We choose to walk with them. See, the, the Spirit always calls us to recognize ourselves in that other and to see part of ourselves sitting on the side of the parade and to feel the hurt of that other person 
In short, the Spirit always calls us to choose love. By my side is sung by Mary Magdalene, right after she's been almost stoned to death by those people who caught her in the midst of adultery. And it ends with Judas Iscariot right before the betrayal. People who easily were off by themselves, but who were somehow invited to be there by Jesus' side. And she sings about wanting to be there. Where are you going? Can you take me there with you? Can I walk in that space with you? Will you let me be there? And if we want to do the same thing, we have to look at each person and says, How do you need me today? We have to look and see each other enough to care about the hurt, the struggle, the difficulty that they're going through and hear their voices. One of the worst things about the children that are marching for their lives is the people who are saying, I choose not to hear you. And we don't want to ever become those people for anyone. Amen. We need to choose in every moment to hear the voice that is calling out, to be one who stands in that space with them, no matter how challenging or difficult it is. Joan Chittister said, to belong to a community is to begin to be about more, to be, begin to be about more than myself. No work is enough to satisfy the human soul. Only the satisfaction of having touched another life and being touched by, by one ourselves can possibly suffice. The spiritual life is about touching lives. It's about letting someone else flow into your heart and letting your heart flow into them. We need others to see who we truly are. And we need others to help us transform strangers into human beings and into friends. That's the spiritual journey, isn't it? To somehow do those two things. To see ourselves <coughs> grow more than what we, what, what, what we think we are. To come to be, to be, become who we truly are. And to let you do the same. To encourage each other to become full human beings. Not the small ones that the problem tells me, the issue, the, the moment of, the, the issue of the moment, but that larger you, that true you. But we have to believe that larger story. We have to live into that larger story. When I heard the second part of By My Side, I realized that I'd ignored it forever because uh, I didn't know what it was about, this pebble in the shoe thing. Have you thought about that? What's it mean, pebble in the shoe? Who wants to walk around with a pebble in the shoe? It hurts. It irritates. We easily go and take the pebble out, but this is a story about choosing to put the pebble in your shoe. And walking with that other person, <coughs> remembering that sometimes it's challenging and difficult. That it takes you out of the joyousness of the parade for a moment to sit beside them on the side of the road. And I love what it says. Hear these words. I'll put a pebble in my shoe and I'll call the pebble dare. Not dare them, but dare me. We will talk together. We will talk about walking. There shall be carried, and when we both have had enough, I will take him from my shoes singing, meet your new road. Then I'll take your hand, glad that you're here by my side. <clears throat> and sometimes when we have to leave the parade to sit, we're not so glad. But when we can hold that hand and 
ultimately walk together, maybe back to the parade together, and remind each other of what's there. What a joyous moment. The Himba people in, in Africa have a wonderful custom. They do not count a, a, a child's age from the day that they are born, or even from the day that they are conceived. They count a child's life from the moment that the mother conceives of conceiving, from the moment she first dreams of that child, and she goes off into the, into the outback, and she sits and listens for the song of that child. And when she has that song of that child in her head, she goes and finds the father and sings that song to him so that he can learn it. And they sing that song to each other until that conception happens and a baby begins to grow within her. And then they begin teaching the, the caregivers, the midwives, those who will help birth this child. And they have them begin to sing this song so that at that birth, they can sing this song to the child. And they teach the whole village so that the village continues to sing that song to that child. In all those moments when they're wondrously perfect and they sing that song in joy, and all those moments when they're less than perfect. And they sing the song in order to help them to remember who they truly are and what's the truth about them. And they sing that moment, that song, all through that child's life, all through that adult's life until that moment of death when they joyously sing that song again, remembering who they were. They circle that person again and again and sing the truth to them. Thank <laughs> you. 